Hi, I'm Pastor Dean Hemphill, and you're watching 10 Minutes of Truth. I study today is something very important to me. It's about singing. I try to sing. I've been singing since I was five years old. Everyone cannot sing, but God said make a joyful noise. But I want you today to realize something as a Christian that the world needs to hear us sing or make a joyful noise. I want to use today a, a true illustration from the uh, Psalms 137 talking about the people of Judah when they were captured in Babylon and they were there for 70 years. I'm going to read the text and we'll come back to it. Psalms 137 verse 1. By the rivers of Babylon there we sat down, yea, we wept, when we remember, remember Zion, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they had carried us away captive, required us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth or excitement, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And they, they said, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Now, get the picture, please. The people of Judah... The people of God are in Babylon, again in captivity. And Babylon, the citizens of Babylon are saying to them, won't you sing us a song? But what the people of Judah done, they began to hang their hearts upon the willows in the midst of where they were, and they laid down their instruments and laid down their song. But the people of Babylon said, we want to hear you sing. People all around our lives all the time who are lost, they watch us. When you and I sometimes are in a strange land, or maybe physical, spiritual, emotional, financially, or whatever, that's when our song really counts. Not the sing a song we on cloud nine when everything is going well, but to make that joyful noise and to share that song in the midst of our valleys is very important. In verse 4, the people of Judah says these words, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How can we sing the Lord's song here in Babylon? We're not in Zion. We're not in Jerusalem. We're not near the temple. How can we sing a song in a strange land? And that's the question. Because all of us as Christians from time to time, we face a strange land. A land we don't want to be in. A land that sometimes is very, very hard to deal with. But that's the time. With God's strength, we have to hum, hum something. We have to make that joyful noise. To sing the song of the Lord in a strange land. I'm not talking about positive confession. Even when your eyes are filled with tears and your heart is completely broken, there's a, there's a place in our life with God's help we can still sing a song in a strange land. The people of Judah had hung their harps in the willows. They had laid down the song. But the people around them who had captured them said, We require of you to sing us a song. Let us hear now what you say you have on the inside. Let us see evidence of that, that you are really someone who knows God who can sing us a song in a strange land. Our greatest testimony that we have toward lost people and the world is when you and I are going through something. That's the time our testimony really shines. When you and I are going through a real hard situation, that's the time in that strange land to sing a song and profess in that strange land, in your life and my life, that God is still real. I want to flip now to the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, and give you another illustration about what singing does in a strange land. The scene is now that we have two men in jail, not for doing wrong. They're there because they're preachers. They're in jail. In Acts 16.25, I'll read the scripture. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. They're in a the jail at Philippi. 
It's midnight, and the place is filled with inmates. And all of a sudden, down the halls of that jail, two men start praying at midnight. I've just read the verse. At midnight, they prayed and sang praises unto God. The song in a strange land you and I need to sing is not a song to people. The song is to be sung to God. They begin to sing and give praises unto God. That's the song we have to sing. Again, not to individuals. The song we sing must be in direction toward God. But I want you to please pay attention to the last part of Acts 16.25. And the prisoners heard them. Do you think about the prisoners that were there for wrongdoing, who were probably guilty of things they had done wrong? But the prisoners heard these two preachers sing songs and pray at midnight. You see, when you and I go on through a very hard trial in a strange land, people watch us and people hear us. And sometimes our song that we sing is not even from our mouth. It's from our life that we live in. We still have our heads up because we know the redemption draw off nigh. We still have the strength of the unseen hand of God. And people all around us see us pray and sing songs in our midnight. We all have a midnight. Sometimes we have midnight in the middle of the day. The darkness comes in our life. Listen, if Paul and Silas could pray and sing songs at midnight in a jail, you and I could do the same thing. You say, but preacher, that's Paul and Silas. We have the same Lord that Paul and Silas had. We, say, we have the same Holy Spirit inside our body as a Christian that Paul and Silas had. I hope we're not in jail because of this. One day we might well be in jail because of the ministry as a Christian. We have the same opportunity in our midnight hour to pray and sing praises unto God. And those around us would hear us. Over the last many years of my life, I've had some trials. I had people to come to me and say, Preacher, I watched you during those months. And that's when I really saw God in your life was real. Not when you had green grass and you walked through the life that was so beautiful. We watched your life when your life was falling apart around you. And we are convinced that you, what you preach is real, that you do have in your heart Jesus Christ. I think sometimes our strange lands are loud in our life to prove some points to ourselves and to those around us. It's not religion. It's not a nomination. It's not a ceremony. Christianity is real. We have strange lands. We have infirmities in our bodies. We have all these valleys to walk through. But with God's help, every time we face a strange situation in our life, we can sing praises unto God, and those around us would hear us. If they hear us complaining, hear us moaning and groaning and murmuring, that does them very little good. If they can hear us pray and sing praises unto God, we'll encourage their life to trust the one that we have trusted as Lord and Savior. Until next time, for 10 Minutes of Truth, I want to encourage you Christian people, with God's help, to sing the song, pray the prayers in your strange land. God bless you very much.